These telephone recordings are from February 1977. This narration was done in February 2021. All right, now let's get to the fun stuff, because here in the Warwick Valley Telephone Company area, there is a TSD, North Electric's System for Operator Services. Before I play you what really happened, let me play you what I expected would happen. We want to dial zero by itself and talk to the operator. So we would dial zero. And cut into a trunk to the Warwick TSD on T carrier. Typical crosstalk there. And then after a few seconds. That was our number sent key pulse five three seven digits. And then a regular start at the end. That's the standard protocol for TSD. And now we're ringing the operator. Operator. Now, wouldn't that be reasonable? Everything done the usual way. Now, uh, what area are we in again? Warwick. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, so much for that plan. The preceding was a composite. Here is what really happened when we dialed zero. I'll turn the volume way up for the middle part of the call progressing. Operator? Here, can you tell me what exchange is available from here, please? Uh, 469. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute, no. 294 is local. Mm -hmm. 986. Mm -hmm. 258. Mm -hmm. 853. Mm -hmm. And 764. And are you sure that's absolutely it? That's absolutely it. Okay, thank you. All right, bye. Bye. So, what the hell just happened? Well, Here's the thing. When a customer is dialing zero, either by itself or to be followed by a number, there is a 100% chance that they are going to need to connect to the TSD switch. That's where the operators are. So logically, dialing zero should go directly into the TSD switch, and like any reasonable place, like Greencastle, Pennsylvania, for example, you dial into the TSD with your rotary dial, and then it flashes and gets your number. and well, I simulated that before. So naturally, here, dialing zero goes into the other Warwick switch, the ESC, which doesn't have any operators. But no problem, it then turns around and calls up the TSD, which does have the operators. And of course, it has to send not only the number you're calling, but your number too. So you're going to hear three sequences of MF. First, we dial zero and go into a long distance trunk to the Warwick ESC. When we don't dial anything after the zero, the ESC flashes, not goes off hook, but flashes, and that triggers our identifier, which sends key pulse plus zero plus our seven digits plus a special start, STP, also known as code 12. Next, the ESC, which doesn't have operators, picks up a trunk to the TSD, which does, and sends key pulse 2 plus 0 plus start. Next, attenuated by the ESC, we hear some NX1 pulsing, then a flash, then our payphone number being sent with key pulse 3, 3 in front, and a code 12 at the end. The standard would have been 5-3 with a regular start at the end. And then the ESC cuts through to the TSD, which makes some more noises and connects us to the operator's ring. When we dial 1 plus a phone number, instead of dialing 0 or 0 first, the start tone at the end of our phone number changes. 
For zero calls, the start tone used is STP, also known as code 12. For one plus, the start tone by our identifier is a regular start, but then when the ESC talks to the TSD, the start tone at the end of our number is a code 11, also known as ST3P. By having a different start tone, depending upon whether the customer is dialing 1 or 0, they can handle 1 plus calls and 0 calls on the same trunk group, not only from here to the ESC, but also from the ESC to the TSD. That's why they use an alternative start. If they didn't do that, they might need to use separate trunks. Now, when I took a good look at Saluda, South Carolina, I realized that there was a disappointment about this protocol that the NX1s use. They've got a hundred possible codes that they can send in front of your number, and that is enough to convey every possibility that you could ever encounter. Yet, it seems as if the standard for coin phones is to send a 5-3, whether you're dialing 1 plus or 0 plus. And sure enough, in Saluda, the 1 plus and 0 plus trunks are separate, at least from the coin phone. So I've criticized the Warwick Valley Telephone Company for sending odd start tones to an NX1 system because that's not how you're supposed to do it. But now it looks like the way you are supposed to do it leaves you no ability to distinguish between a coin phone dialing 1 and a coin phone dialing 0. And so the way Warwick does it actually solves that problem. The standard way appears not to. Here's dialing 1 plus 215-555-1212. The start tones at the end of our number will be different, as I just mentioned, and the middle sequence, this, that is the number we're calling with a key pulse and a 2 in front of it, and a start at the end of it. Oh no, not this again. Yeah, it seems like every time the TSD is completely finished with you, or screws up, you get this. We heard this a lot in the last program, and I actually had not figured out what this is, until one of my listeners pointed out the obvious that I'd missed. This is the ubiquitous NX1 busy signal. Of course that's what this is. It just doesn't have the tone. We tried dialing 555-1212 in distant area codes two other times, and it never worked. Here are those two other times, starting with the last digit that we dialed. This next one features an interesting power supply noise that comes on the identifier when it's operating. There was a fourth attempt, which I won't include here. It failed as well. So did the TSD ever work? We actually got it to work a few times. Not on 555-1212, but on regular phone numbers. Here's one plus a New York City number.
The TSD just flashed. Normally it would put us on that ubiquitous busy signal that isn't. And then 11 seconds after that... Hello? 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 Uh, excuse me, I'm testing. What, uh, what exchanges are you calling from there? In what uh, town? Okay, thank you. Bizarre. The conversation was barely audible. I had to turn up the volume so that you could hear it, and I lowered the volume of my voice to compensate. And of course, that should never happen. Now I can tell you why there was a flash followed by a tick 11 seconds later. The TSD trunk was resetting and going into a mode where it was listening for MFs, which never come. So it just times out 11 seconds later. But I can't explain why on timeout it did that one time. Very strange. Now here's a zero call, just dialing zero and asking the operator to try numbers for us. And at the end of this call, we again get the flash and a tick 11 seconds later, but nothing strange. Yeah, could you get me area code two one two seven two four zero oh, five nine nine? Are you paying for the call? Yeah, we are. After they answer to dollar five. Thank you. Try him on 212-877-9970. Okay, there's the TSD flashing when the operator releases again. And then 11 seconds later, there's that tick again. But nothing else is happening. You know, it occurs to me that this might be where a reorder tone is supposed to be. Now there's another tick that might be another caller clicking into where the reorder should be. I did a short flash and now we're not on the trunk anymore. Try dialing some digits. Okay, I've got an answer as to why we clicked into a conversation. The Warwick telephone switch 986 is an ESC. It has been an ESC for over a year. That means it not only has custom calling features, but there has been time for people to subscribe to them. What if one of the two people who are in that conversation has three-way calling and made a call that involved the TSD? The call either failed or went to an operator and finished. Either way, that ends up with the reorder tone, except there's no tone. Now with no sound being made, the added on call that failed or finished with an operator stays up because there's no reason for the customer to disconnect it. So he and she go back to talking 
with the reorder bridged in, and everything's normal until I click into where the reorder tone should be, and the place where the reorder should be is slightly talkable, so that's why I hear them, and I can talk to them. That would explain everything. That second click that we heard just now was probably another caller coming into the reorder tone that isn't. I should have said hello, and they probably would have heard me at a low level. Okay, seriously, I do think that that's what it is. There's no reorder tone. But the place where the reorder is supposed to be, like so many places in the network, is talkable. And that's why it happened. The low volume of the conversation strongly suggests that we were connected via some place that wasn't intended for talking, such as the common bus for a reorder tone that isn't connected. All right, now here's a one-plus call to a crossbar one busy signal in Washington, D.C. Stopping the tape for a minute, the operator has dialed 202 plus a three-digit 1XX code. It's hard to tell what she dialed because when Warwick's ESC MFs out into long distance land, the MF tones almost are single frequencies. Actually, you can hear one of the frequencies a lot louder than the other. It sounds to me like she dialed 202122, which really doesn't make a lot of sense. 121 would be to reach the inward operator. And in any case, as you'll hear in a minute, the call doesn't go through. She then restarts and calls the number I dialed. I'm going to run the tape back a few seconds and let it go. This is recognizable as the busy signal that isn't. It didn't flash, it just went here. Here's dialing 1 plus 212 That's kind of a strange number and the operator notices it and asks, what number are you calling? We just hang up on her, so thanks to that we don't know how this call might have ended with the flash or the busy signal that isn't.
your call, please. What number are you calling? Operator? Now, I've made a big deal of the fact that there is no direct trunk from the Florida-New York step that we're calling from to the Warwick TSD where the operators are. Well, that's true for dialing 1 and 0, but they do have a direct trunk to TSD just for 411 directory assistance. You dial 4 here, you go to a second selector, and on that second selector, 1 goes into a special trunk right into the TSD, into which you dial a 1, and it connects you to directory assistance. That's twice today, she said. That was a flash to reset the TSD trunk. And now here's a two. Finally, we get an actual busy signal tone from the TSD equipment in Warwick. How about that? Why we got that, I don't know. Here is starting over and dialing 4, 1, which goes into the TSD trunk, and then 3. I reset, now here's a zero. Your number, please? My number? Yes. 651-8012. I'm once again getting that feeling of rummaging around in an old attic that I first got in programs 4 and 5. On this special trunk for directory assistance, one goes apparently to directory assistance, two rings and then sort of answers and then you end up with a busy signal, three goes right to the busy signal, zero goes to an operator who asks for your number and then you get a busy signal. Let's try that last one again, starting from scratch, 410. Oh, so it's inconsistent. What a surprise. Not. And it started to ring one thing, and then in the middle of the ring, it kind of switched to a louder ring, like this. I reset the trunk and dialed zero one more time. I'm assuming that this is the operator just answering silently. She's probably on another call because it's late at night. And that's what the 4-1 trunk does. 4-1 goes to TSD on a special trunk that is expecting the customer to dial a 1, which goes to directory assistance.
If you dial a 3 through 9, you go to a busy signal. 2, well, you heard what 2 did, and 0 was kind of inconsistent, but that's basically it. Ben and I checked out the selector on 4, and other than 1, it was all vacant except for 5. 4-5 four, went to a trunk to TSD, which was the full equivalent of dialing 1, including the TSD being informed that we're calling from a coin phone. So nothing special there, except you could hang up on the operator. However, the tape doesn't show whether you could also hang up on the operator just dialing 1. Let's see what happens if we dial 0 plus an area code plus a bunch of 1s. No office codes begin with 1 in the network, but there are special operator and routing codes that do. Well, that's not surprising. Customers aren't supposed to dial the 1XX codes after area codes, so the ESC intercepted it with a reorder tone. Now, it's pretty clear that the ESC in Warwick is acting as the CAMA, Centralized Automatic Message Accounting, for this area. So when people dial 1 from their home phones, it doesn't go to TSD, it goes to the Warwick ESC. I was surprised that 0 didn't go directly to the TSD, but there's actually a possible good reason, and that is that the identifier, the thing that sends the number you're calling from, is old, probably from the late 1960s, where they began using it for customers at home dialing 1 for long distance. The 1 plus long distance calls were going through a CAMA system associated with the old Warwick step office, and so the identifiers were using the typical format, key pulse, zero, telephone number, and start which is used for CAMA systems all over North America, except the NX1 systems. Then, sometime later, the TSD comes in and it requires a different format. Key pulse plus two digits plus the phone number and then a start of some sort. To change all the identifiers in each of these little offices to handle the new format was probably not worthwhile. After all, that is hardwired relay logic. So what they probably did was wait until they had the Warwick ESC, a software-controlled switch, and that ESC could be easily programmed to translate the old format to the new format. Assuming the TSD came in first, and we really don't know the cutover date, all we do know is that by the time the ESC was there, the TSD was there too. Assuming it came in early, all they had to do was have the operator ask for the customer's number until the ESC came in to do the translation so they didn't have to ask. That would handle it without having to rewire all those relay logic identifier circuits. Now another possible reason why they did this was they wanted to concentrate the zero and zero plus calls onto one trunk group going into the TSD. If you can concentrate the traffic from all the tributaries into one trunk group, you end up needing fewer trunks into the TSD because larger trunk groups are more efficient. So those are the two reasons I can think of why zero doesn't go to the TSD directly, even though 100% of the zero calls do need to end up there. From this payphone, if you dial 1 plus an 800 number, you can hear a call go out directly into the long-distance network without using the TSD. That would also be true for any 1 plus call dialed from home. Here is 1-800-522 plus a vacant number. That's an intrastate exchange code for New York.
21210 is New York 10, an AT&T 4A installed in 1973 that for a while had a recording ID conflict with Burrow Tandem 4. I've discussed that elsewhere. Apparently, New York 10 has taken over the Intrastate 800 for New York City. Used to be New York 4 and 7. I don't know why we got a P, your call did not go through type recording there. Here is another 800 number. This goes to a working announcement. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe some of you will recognize what they're talking about. This is the last call we made. Our batteries were dying, so the speed problems are from my own tape recorder. Ah, cool. When I flash my hook, the flash goes all the way down the line into the long distance network. It's kind of cool that I can do that from my phone. There's another cool thing about ESCs. When they're your long distance outgoing tandem, you can flash through. Well, that's it for our February spring preview phone trip. I specifically recall how this day ended. We went back to New York City, to Chinatown, where we met Charlie, the PDP-8 guy, for some great Chinese food. This was a favorite thing to do with Charlie. I know Bill Acker has fond memories of that as well, although he wasn't there that night. Well, there's going to be at least one other program in this series, because, at the very least, I have an epilogue calling the Nyack Sector over N1 Carrier in 1981. 